So then in stress, your brain is firing very incoherently, and at the same time, your heart is racing because the adrenaline from stress is telling you to run, fight, and hide, but social mores say you can't do any of those things. So now you're stepping on the gas and the brake at the same time, and your heart starts to race and starts to fire very incoherently. And when your heart is incoherent, you stop trusting yourself. You stop believing in yourself. You start be stop believing in your future and your dreams because this center right here is the center from which we create. And when energy moves in this center, it begins to create more coherence in the heart. All these centers below, the centers of the body, excuse my art here, but this is the body here. <laughs> it looked really good at one point. Our sexuality, our consumption of food, our, uh, our ability to use our will to overcome the conditions in our environment. Most people live by these centers here. These are centers of awareness, centers of energy. And each one, every thought that you have produces a frequency. So this is what we call the zero point field. It is the quantum field, the unified field, the energy that connects everything material. It is the consciousness of the all in all. It is oneness, wholeness, universal mind, infinite intelligence, zero point field, the unified field, source, observer, the void, the fertile void, all possibilities, the eternal now, the infinite unknown, the very life force that holds everything together. And it's a unifying field. And scientists have been trying to unify the principles and the energy of the universe to explain how matter exists. Are you with me still? So energy then, the zero point field, slows down in frequency and it reaches a certain point and at this level there's an explosion called the Big Bang. And all of a sudden energy can't slow any, anymore before it divides and becomes polarized. And the patterns of everything material exist at the speed of light. And it's the patterns then that slow energy down to take form and structure that ultimately appear as matter. Now, all of us, the divine aspect of ourselves, came from this universal intelligence and we came all the way down into density. And this is the realm of our senses. And we can experience the three-dimensional reality with our senses and we spend our whole life being a somebody or having some type of body or knowing someone or being someone, owning certain things, living somewhere and some time. And this becomes the identity. Are you with me still? So then, People then spend the majority of their life living it in this way and they experience from matter the greatest separation from the unified field. Here is source and if you're living as a body local in space and time, you're experiencing a separation between you as a consciousness and the consciousness of the unified field. So when you're living in as a body in space and time, it takes a long time for your dreams to happen. Are you with me still? So if you're thinking certain thoughts and certain thoughts produce certain feelings, you're taking a thought and you're beginning to store it as energy or emotion in one of these centers. And most people are thinking in these first three centers. And when they do, they're storing energy in their first three centers and their body's being conditioned to be the mind. It takes opening this center to begin to cr the creative process. This is the center of oneness. This is the center of wholeness. This is the union of polarity and duality. And if you can't get energy into your heart then, for the most part then, it requires a coherent brain and a coherent heart to begin to affect the nature of reality, to begin to affect matter. Are you with me still? So then every thought that you think produces a frequency. And most people's frequencies, most people's thoughts are in this realm right here. And it would make sense then, if they're thinking lower thought frequencies, then it's gonna take a long time for their dreams to come true. How many people understand? Turn the person next to you and explain.
Now, how many people are understanding, yes? So if you're reacting, if you're reacting to the problems in your life or that box reality, that reality that hasn't changed, no matter what you did, you tried, you forced, you prayed, you hoped, you wished, you hired people, you fired people, you've forgiven, you've done all those things and still it hasn't changed. That's because the moment you come back to your senses, you're consciously or unconsciously having certain thoughts that are connected to that problem that are producing a certain frequency or a certain feeling and you're producing the same energy every single day and your life stays the same. Are you with me still? Think about this. Think about that problem in your life or that condition is ne that has never changed. What are your thoughts about it? It's not something pleasant, is it? And what are the feelings associated with it? There aren't feelings that you don't typically want to live by, but you live by those feelings every single day. Yes or no? So then you're reacting consciously or unconsciously to the thought of the problem or the actual problem over and over again, you are broadcasting an electromagnetic signature into your field. But if you're creating, and those thoughts are these lower frequency thoughts, then you have very little effect on matter. So now you gotta go make the problem happen. You gotta go change it with you. You gotta get your identity or personality involved in it. Are you with me still? Come on. So then we found out in the research that we've done, and we now know there's a formula, that when a person takes all of their attention off their body, all of their attention off the people in their life, all of their attention off the things they own, their cell phone, their computer, their car, every object or material thing. Take their attention off their home, where they sleep, where they work. They take all the attention off where they're even sitting and they take their attention off the predictable future or the familiar past and they find the sweet spot of the generous present moment. Then they're disinvesting all of their attention and energy out of this three-dimensional reality and they're moving in the opposite direction towards the unified field. And now, when they become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time, they have to pass through different layers of emotions that are, have memories, different frequencies that are carrying different, in, that's carrying different information and they gotta pass through these layers that have become their identity. And most people, don't know how to make their way through, so they do a little bit and then they come back to their identity, the same personality. Most of you, almost all of you, have traversed through these frequencies and reached the point where you can become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time, and that is the moment you are pure consciousness and you now are no longer associating with anything in three-dimensional reality. And if where you place your attention is where you place your energy, then you're disinvesting all of your attention and energy at of this three-dimensional reality off of everything that's known and you're making a choice to go to a field where all possibilities exist, the unknown, the quantum field, above the speed of light. And Einstein said, E equals MC squared. Anything that travels, matter traveling faster than the speed of light is gonna turn into energy. And this tends to create more connection, more unity, while matter creates more separation. And as you get closer and closer to the unified field, you will experience more oneness, more wholeness, more connection. You'll experience a greater level of mind. How many people understand? Now this is important because in order for us to do that, a person has to go from a narrow focus on matter and begin to widen and broaden their focus on nothing but space a nothing, on a, on a void of anything material. And when you do that properly and you begin to open your awareness, most of you experience this, when you start sensing space, you're no longer thinking. And if you're no longer thinking, you're no longer analyzing. And if you're no longer analyzing, you're no longer activating these circuits in your brain. And when you no longer activate these circuits in the brain, you begin to suppress the memory bank of your known identity called the neocortex. Are you with me still? And if you do that properly, your brain waves move from that agitated, aroused, high beta state into a mid-range beta state. And then you may move a little bit and then you, you, if you're addicted to those stress hormones or you're conditioned to those emotions, and then all of a sudden you may move back into high beta and you get frustrated and impatient with yourself and you wanna quit and there's disorder in the brain and then you go back again to the next meditation and you do it again. And as you start opening your awareness and your brainwaves start to change from beta to alpha, 
all of a sudden you start crossing the analytical mind. And what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. And now you're entering the subconscious programs. Now you're entering the operating system. Are you with me still? And as you open your focus and you start connecting to energy, to the unified field, to nothing, its signature is oneness and wholeness. And when you start processing that frequency, all of a sudden the brain starts getting more organized. It starts getting more coherent. It starts resonating in cadence. It starts to synchronize. And all of a sudden different compartments of the brain that were subdivided start to integrate and become more whole. And you start feeling more like yourself. And not only do you produce alpha brainwave patterns or theta brainwave patterns, you produce coherent and organized patterns. And all of a sudden the brain starts moving into more coherence or psychic union. By the same means, we know that if you place your attention in your heart, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. Out of the infinite possibilities in the quantum field you can put your attention on, you put all of your attention right here. And if you can regulate and learn how to create elevated emotions, these emotions down here are pain and guilt and shame and unworthiness and suffering and anger and frustration and patience and resentment and competition and envy and jealousy and, and importance. These are, these are all those slower frequency emotions and when you cross over into oneness or wholeness, energy moves into your heart and you start feeling gratitude, appreciation, kindness, care, joy, bliss, ecstasy. These are faster frequencies and that's how you know you're getting closer to the unified field. Are you with me still? And when energy moves into the heart, instead of energy being used in these first three centers, consuming and turning into chemistry, once energy makes it into the heart and the heart begins to become activated and you can train your body to condition it to an elevated emotion, the heart all of a sudden starts to beat in coherence, in rhythm. And once energy makes it to the heart, it goes right up to the brain. That's what the research shows. And once energy is in the heart and the heart starts becoming coherent, now all of a sudden it begins to produce a measurable magnetic field. The field around the body begins to expand and now you become more energy and less matter, more wave and less particle. And that energy, that elevated emotion can carry the thought of your health it can carry the thought of your wealth. Suffering cannot carry the thought of your health. It carries a different set of thoughts. It's a different consciousness. How many people understand? So then, the more we live by these emotions down here, the more we experience separation and it takes a longer amount of time for things to happen. You've been practicing opening your awareness You've been practicing heart coherence and your brain and heart start becoming more coherent and all of a sudden you feel less separate from everyone and everything. That's why you're getting along with everybody here. Have you noticed that? <laughs> so then when you're in this place and you feel it, <laughs> this is a different consciousness. It's a different energy than these other centers. This is the center of selflessness. This is the center in which we give. This is the center in which we trust. This is the center in which we create, we love. This is the center of joy, a whole different consciousness. And you have to move out of survival in order to get there, which means you're gonna have to break the conditioning and the addiction to those emotions. Are you with me still? So then, check this out. This is the realm of space-time. This is the three-dimensional reality that we live in. We call it the universe. And in this known universe, there's an infinite amount of space. Space is eternal. It goes on forever. And because space is eternal, we experience time as we move through space. So here's one point of consciousness, Joe Dispenza. And then there's the other point of consciousness. I'm putting my awareness on the door. And as I move my body through space, I experience time. How many people are with me? So everything in the material world occupies a place or a space in time. And we can say that everything is height and depth and width. And everything in the three-dimensional world is made up of matter. And this is the realm of the senses. We would call it everything local in space and time. It's occupying space and time. So then what makes up the material world? Bodies, things, places, people, objects. It's the particle in quantum physics. And so then when you associate in your known three-dimensional linear reality 
You're the somebody, the someone, the something, somewhere in some time, and you're identifying or creating an identity based on everything known in your life. We could say that you're a body in the environment and time. And because you live in a three-dimensional reality heightened by the senses and the hormones of stress, we experience separation or duality or polarity. In other words, we're waiting for our healing to occur to feel gratitude. We're waiting for our wealth to really feel abundance, which means we're experiencing lack the entire time. So then if you're feeling lack and you're waiting, you're not creating. It makes sense then if that lack is driving certain thoughts equal to that lack, then you're creating more lack, yes or no? And you're under the illusion that when it happens, something outside of you is going to change your internal state. Then that will give you relief. But if you're not creating reality and the lack is driving more thoughts, then most people spend their whole life living in lack. How many people understand? And in this realm, of course, because of duality and polarity, everything is predictable. When you put all of your attention on your body, all of your attention on the things in your environment, and all of your attention on linear time, then you've got to play by the rules of Newtonian physics. And Newtonian physics is all about the predictable. And because of Newtonian physics, there are certain laws that govern objects in the three-dimensional reality. And because of Newton, we can shoot a rocket to the moon and predict how long it's going to take to get there. Are you with me still? So then if you're living your life as a body, local in space and time, and you're trying to predict your future, and the brain is an anticipation machine, every time you're trying to predict your future, you're laying down a known over an unknown. How many people understand? So, come on. So then, our formula then is to create coherence in the brain and heart. In order for you to do that, you've got to leave three-dimensional reality and enter another realm, time, the fourth dimension. And that is the speed of light. And when you become nobody, you take your attention off your body, you're not a body. When you take your attention off the people in your life that you identify with, you're no one. If you're not thinking about the things you own, the place you live, or time itself, you become no, in nothing, nowhere, and no time. And this is the door. This is the nexus to the quantum field. And now you become pure consciousness or awareness. And now you're moving closer to the eternal present moment. Are you with me still? Now... We have labored for years and we have worked really hard this week to be able to shed our identity and suppress the neocortex and the thinking memory bank and literally, literally become someone else, a consciousness in this realm called the quantum field where there's nothing material, the fertile void. And that is an infinite amount of space where there's nothing physical. How many people are with me? And you can linger there without a name now. You can linger there without wondering how long it takes. You can linger there without your problems. You're lingering in a place that you're dissociating from everything physical. And if you're no longer putting any of your attention or energy in this three-dimensional reality, all of a sudden now, there's another world that exists called the quantum world or the fifth dimension. Now, in this realm, this quantum world, there's nothing physical. It's made up of consciousness or thought. This is the realm of thought. And thought is infinite possibilities. Would you agree? How many thoughts could you have? Infinite. I equal to how you, how you think. So this is the realm where there's nothing physical. It's made of frequency or information, because all frequency carries information, or light or vibration, consciousness. And because nothing is physical here, it doesn't exist local in space and time, we could say everything exists as a possibility, non-local, or what we call the wave function in quantum physics. Are you with me still? So if you're looking for something here, then you're back to the three-dimensional world. If you're trying to predict how your, your creation is going to happen, you're back to the Newtonian world again. So in this realm now, in the realm of time-space, there's infinite number of possibilities, so many potentials, and this is the unknown. And because there's an infinite amount of time in the quantum world, think about this, if time is infinite or time is eternal, it makes sense then, if you had all the time in the world, there are infinite possibilities of things you can do. How many people understand? That's the quantum field. Their time is so elongated that there's one long now. There's no past, there's no future. It's all happening when? Now. So then when you reach this point, 
and you start connecting to the quantum field, all of a sudden, you start experiencing less separation. You start experiencing more oneness, more wholeness. You start feeling connected to something greater. You're connecting to an energy, and you're no longer connecting to matter or ever, anything known. Are you with me still? Come on. So then, the only way that... Think about this. In the quantum, there is no space and there is no time. So there was an experiment done called the aspect experiment. They took these two photons and they found each other on quantummatch.com. <laughs> and one of them said, man, I really like your particles. And the other one said, I like your particles too. And they said, well, let's get together and exchange some information. So when they started exchanging information, they started to bond together. Are you with me? And so then they said, okay, let's separate you two. That's enough. And they shot one to one side of the universe. And then they shot the other one to the other side of the universe. And they annihilated this one particle right here. And at the exact same time that they annihilated this particle, this one disappeared. Ex the exact same moment. Now, if there was, this one disappeared a millisecond later, or a milli, 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 millisecond later, then it would have had to, information would have had to move through space and it would have created time. Yes or no? But if they disappear at the exact same time, then it means then there is no space there. Are you with me still? Which means there's a realm beyond space and time where there's nothing separate. So then if there's no space here, then there's no time that everything exists in the eternal now. Are you with me still? Yes. Come on. Yes. I know it's hard to swallow, but think about it. If there's no space, then you have an infinite amount of time, then you only have possibilities. And all possibilities exist as frequencies. And the way we experience moving through this realm is that we don't move anywhere. You can't move anywhere. There's no place to go. There's no place to go because there's no space. And if there's no space, there's no time. You're at the source of it all. And all you can do is change your frequency or change your consciousness, change your awareness of energy. And when you do, you can move through time and experience spaces by changing vibration or frequency. Are you with me still? You speed up here from one place to another, it takes time to do that. Yes or no? If you go faster, it takes less time. If you go slower, it takes more time. Well, in this realm, there's no place to go. All you do is change your frequency. You change your frequency to a faster frequency, then you experience a different dimension, a different time. How many people are with me? And there's infinite numbers of these that exist in the eternal present moment. So there's a frequency for health, for wealth, for a new relationship, a new job, <clears throat> for, for a mystical experience. They all exist as different dimensions. And the way we've talked about it this week, remember, is you go into the department store, you have a mirror over here and a mirror over here, and you look back at both of those mirrors and you see an infinite number of views this way and an infinite number of views this way, yes? Those are dimensions. So then, is there a possibility in one of these dimensions, one of those boxes, where that problem doesn't exist, where the challenge doesn't exist? Yes or no? Yes. And could, is there a possibility where everything could be exactly the same in your life, except the only thing that's different is there's a solution to that problem? Yes, yes or no? Yes. It exists as a potential. If you can think it, it exists there. Yes or no? So then if you can get beyond your body, your environment, and time, and become pure consciousness, you're at the precipice of the unified field, and I ask you to start tuning in to a greater frequency of oneness and wholeness. And you could find it. You could feel it. You could pay attention to it. You can stay aware of it, moment after moment after moment. You're not your body doing that. You're just consciousness. And this is consciousness. This is energy. And so you tune into frequencies, and when you do that, you begin to change from this realm into this realm. Are you with me still? Now think about this. <clears throat> the problem or condition in your life that has become the box that hasn't changed 
you're meeting from the same level of consciousness, which means you're thinking the same way about it, you're reacting emotionally the same way about it, and those emotions then are energy, and you're producing the same energy every single day, and it's staying the same. Yes or no? So then, is it possible then to move into a realm where there's another box for you to experience, another reality to experience where that problem doesn't exist? Now, do you have to know how it's going to be resolved? Nope, none of your business. It's your job then to create a, a, a thought that you are outside of that problem. The best way I can describe it is you are out of that box and another box and all you have to do is bring up the feeling or the emotion of no longer being in that reality. And if you can bring up the energy or the emotion, now you're in a new box. Are you with me still? You don't have to have any thought about what it's going to look like. All you have to do is have the thought that you're outside of that reality into another reality. Are you with me still? Now, I said that when you wake up in the morning and you put your attention on the coffee maker or in the kitchen, you're putting your attention in the future, yes or no? And your body is following your mind right to that future, yes? Right to a known. So then is it possible then if you could unfold into a box where the problem is resolved and begin to change your energy and what would the energy be? Gratitude. For me, it's relief. I move to another box and it's just over and I just feel relief. And I'm outside the box and I'm at a greater level of consciousness than everybody else that's contributing to that problem. Are you with me still? Including me. Did you hear that? So then, if I could get to that place, the zero-point field where everything is happening, and I could unfold in the, into the future when, and I could be in that place, is it possible once I'm in that place as consciousness, not my body, that if I'm there, I could connect to my body in the field and draw my body to me? Are you with me still? And could my body follow my mind right to that future, but when is it happening? No. So you don't go anywhere. All you have to do is raise your frequency to a box where it doesn't exist. Are you with me still? Now, there's a caveat. Because if you do this and you return to your life, now remember, that box has everything to do with your consciousness. You are contributing to it energetically with your thoughts and feelings. Yes or no? Yes. So you're not immune or separate from it. You're part of the consciousness that's keeping everything the same with all the people and all the conditions. Yes or no? Yes. So then if you're drawing your body to the future in the present moment from the void or from the quantum field, and you react in the same way in your life, to the same people and the same conditions, the door just closed. You, the door closed because now your body isn't going to follow your mind into the future. It's going to stay in that box because you're part of the consciousness that's creating it. Are you with me still? Turn the person next to you and explain.